brain. <laughs> so thank you guys so much for joining us today. And I'm not really going to be teaching you um, an exact placement or foil pattern per se, but more of a thought process that you can use on pretty much any layered haircut. Um, today, we're going to be showing you on a shag. Why? Because it is probably one of the most popular haircuts of the moment. And also, <laughs> these layers are so short <laughs> that they're not going to be growing out for a while. So we're going to be coloring them just for a little bit. So we might have a couple tricks up our sleeve to do it. So in this thought process, uh, the first thing we like to do is an assessment of the hair, right? So is it a shag? Is it a mullet? <laughs> She's gonna look. Is there a rat tail? Right. <laughs> Does it matter which is which? Not really. More importantly, um, we have to establish uh, a focal point, right? And rain is not really business in the front and party in the back. Uh, rain's kind of party all over, right? Party all over. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but she does have this really cool rat tail in the back, right? And she's got a lot of movement back here, which is typical for a shag. However, because her hair is solid at this point, it's kind of hard to see all the really cool texture and layering that you have in there. So this technique or thought process will help you kind of break that up and really highlight those pieces to make your client um, feel like they have more movement and texture. So let's get started. Cool. Oh, you're getting so much love already. We've got David Henson. Oh, saying hello. hi. <laughs> Everyone loves your skinny mixed hair. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, y'all, I have the quintessential um, basic girl shag, right? <laughs> Mine's not as cool as Rain's. Yeah, and the party all over. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're gonna start by sectioning ear to ear, like in a typical full foil pattern. Um, I always say start in the area that is your point of interest. Also, um, if you start in the back and you're slow, like I am, you can always rinse it out, right? Yeah. Okay. So from ear to ear horizontally. Correct. Okay. So just to bring you all up to speed, thank you all so much for joining. This is Sadie and we're Van Michael Salon. She's one of our top colorists and she is going to teach a thought process on how and where to place color with a shag slash mullet. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So each um, shag is unique, right? Like some might be cut horizontally, some might be cut um, vertically. Uh, Hannah, how did you cut Rain's hair? It's funny just because it really resonated. If anybody doesn't know, here at Van Michael Salon in Atlanta, Georgia, we're departmentalized, meaning we just cut or we just color. So Sadie is a colorist and I'm a hair cutter. And when she just was starting to explain about where to start, it's always like you think about your focal point. So with Rain's haircut, the focal point is the front and the fringe and how short um, the shag is going to be, or I often will start at the shortest point. So I started in the front and then I worked with diagonal back sections just because I wanted everything to flow away from the face. Perfect. Okay, and that's really great because um, typically with a shag, I use diagonal partings. Uh, they fall a little bit softer and smoother through the hair if they wear their hair up. Um, you have a nice long clean line instead of a block of a horizontal color. Okay, so I'm gonna have you look down rain and tilt your head to the right slightly. Okay, so also, I my personal aesthetic with most haircuts is I like to keep my perimeter solid because that has a really cool shape. If you are lightening this perimeter shape up, it can kind of disappear, especially if it's blonde. Um, Rain's not really a blonde girl, mm -hmm. um, but I do want to keep this solid. So I'm going to take a horizontal, or sorry, a diagonal section, right? And a lot of times I'll use my finger as a point 
to connect with my calm. And I'm just going to kind of look at this and see how that's going to fall, right? So you don't want, you want the perimeter to be a little bit more solid just because if you're lightening it, you don't want to lose that. Perimeter. Yeah, sometimes, you know, depending on how thick somebody's hair is, um, Rain's got a lot of hair, um, you could probably go a little bit closer into her hairline. But if somebody doesn't have a lot of hair and you go through and you lighten all that, it just, it disappears, it's gone. So, okay, so we are taking a slice, all right? Slice. Mm -hmm. And I pre-fold my foils. I was just about to ask that. Yes. It's just the way that I was taught at the Aveda Institute in Minneapolis. So I'm using my pointer finger and my thumb to hold that taut. So okay. we are getting as close as possible, okay? Uh, so we're gonna go mid shaft up. You're never gonna start right at the beginning of the foil because that's when you get a little bit of bleeding happening. So you start just a little bit below that's and then right. work your way up. That's right. Okay. Okay, so now you use your hand underneath to support and you're kind of pushing up back towards the scalp. So in case your foil shifts a little bit while you're painting through, it it's supported by your hand and it's not really gonna move a whole lot. Okay. So. Why do you shift your, um, this may just be because I'm not a colorist, but yeah. like, so like I watch you take your brush and your brush is more flat sometimes. And then, and then you, I turn yeah. it to the side. That's so I can really get in there and make sure all the hair is saturated. So all it right. kind of penetrates the hair just a little bit That's more. right. Yeah. Okay. So making a nice seal, both sides done. All right. So. Typically, when I am creating kind of a block color placement, okay. which this can be, uh, you know, a natural placement or unnatural placement, um, I like to choose how deep my subsection is going to be first so I know where I'm working to. So we are going to work right up until this point right here. So this is pretty visual, like you're assessing the perimeter yep. and you're determining where you want to see That's that right. block, That's not right. just like based upon anything other than where, what you see visually. That's right. I mean, you're an artist, right? And like yeah. I said, not all shags, mullets, layered haircuts are created the same, right? Some are going to have more or less layering. So you really want to tailor um, your color placement to each client so their coloring is unique. Um, you know, when I was asked to teach this thought process, um, I was kind of thinking about how a lot of the shag pictures you see today have um, pictures from the front, right? It's just, right. you know, everything those, shot from the front. Yep, it's those blonde pieces in the front, kind of like what I have, right? Um, which is great, but what does it look like from the back? <laughs> <laughs> you know, a lot of people see you from the back. Uh, so we want to make sure we are also learning how to play at the back, right? So um, Candace Shelton asked, how do you keep your foil, um, how do you get the foil to not move? And I thought you did a pretty good job explaining that. So was it tension and was it something holding underneath? Yes. So let's go over that one more yeah. time with this next section. So slice very fine okay the finer the better you're going to get more even color saturation that way pick all these little tiny baby hairs out okay so i'm holding this probably pretty tight right yeah lifting it up pressing down i always use the back of my comb to smooth it out to just get as close as i possibly can Okay. And you're like pinching the yes, hair at the bottom. Yes, holding tension with my forefinger and thumb. Starting at mid shaft, okay? I'm literally pressing down into poor Rain's little head. <laughs> okay, also you leaned her away earlier as well. Is that mm -hmm. just to get in there angle-wise? Yeah, so it's really hard um, getting in this little area when somebody has a shoulder. <laughs> yeah. Most people have shoulders. So it is helpful if they're kind of tilted away from you. 
as opposed to leaning towards you, which is most clients' natural inclination. They just want to get closer and closer. Sean Bruno's watching. He says, get it. <laughs> Hi, Sean. If anybody's complimenting Sadie's hair, Sean works at <gasps> Michael. Yes. Sadie's hair. And we'll shout out my former assistant slash protege, Tyler. <laughs> yeah, that's Who true. colored my hair Aww. in October. And it still looks, it looks good. It does look really good. Okay. Delete. All right, we're just gonna go through and finish this section once again using a slice. Picking out all these little baby hairs. Hannah, are you picking up the sound from my foils or no? Are we okay? I don't know, I think so. Okay. If you guys are just joining, thank you so much. We're covering cover, color placement on a shag, and Sadie's really covering her thought process um, and how she chooses where to place it. Candace is wondering why slice and not weave? So you could weave. You yeah. could do whatever you want. Um, just know that if you do weave, you're not gonna have as bold of an outcome. Um, once again, rain is pretty cool girl. We are going for more of a bold look and you can mix and match. Um, I probably will once I get to that top area, maybe weave a couple pieces. Um, it's really, you know, about how you feel and how, what your client wants to achieve, right? So the, the slicing is definitely going to lead to a bolder, yes. stronger, yes. prominent yes. effect. For sure. Yeah, and then sometimes you'll, like you're mentioning, that you may switch to weaving. That's right. When you want to transition out. That's of right. That. Now, because this piece is at the very bottom of her hair, right? It's underneath all that other hair, and because Rain has a boatload of hair, <laughs> she does. you probably would not see a weave under here as so well density. as you would. Yeah, density is going to play a role, right, in choosing um, if you're slicing or weaving. Valerie, thank you so much for asking. Valerie's asking, what product are you using <gasps> here? Thank you for asking. This is the one and only Aveda <laughs> Enlightener yeah. with the new Botanical Repair add-in. So you add in the Botanical Repair to the Enlightener. That is correct. There okay. are four pumps, which is really kind of fun to pump that in there. Does it alter the consistency and do you like that? Um, you know what? I really haven't noticed that it alters the consistency, which is interesting. I've never <laughs> thought about that yeah, before. Yeah, because it looks kind of like when I've seen it in the bottle. I'm not a yeah, colorist, it's so I don't know. <laughs> it's liquidy. Yeah. I mean, whatever it does, I like it. So that would be the botanical repair part one or part two? Part one. Part one. Yes, ma'am. In the color. Ma I am using 20 volume because once again, Rain has a lot of hair. It's a little um, coarser texture. Uh -huh. She has like a tight cuticle layer on there um, and it's also pretty dark. So we're wanting to lift her up light so we can put a nice bright fashion color on there. All How right. many foils have you done thus far? We'll see maybe when you fold it up. Not enough. Not enough. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the clay lightener, is that like if it's air processing? Yes. Okay. So the clay lightener um, encapsulates the hair. Yeah. So you can room temperature process. All right. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six foils in there right now. We're going to do... One more because I like odd numbers. Right. Um, the human eye actually perceives odd numbers as being more um, natural than even numbers, uh, which is interesting. I just took a floral arranging class. <gasps> they were also saying that, like, like right. always place like threes, threes. five, seven, Th right. like odd numbers. Right. Three is the magic number. Um, 
there's also a thought process of a golden triangle and things. So I really try to recreate that a lot in my placement. A um, golden triangle? Mm-hmm. Cool. Yes. So, you know, my background really is an art background. Okay. Um, a lot of color theory is based in art theory, right? And so when we talk about creating depth or creating movement or creating balance or symmetry or any of those things, those are all um, based in art theory. And so if you are not somebody who um, took art in college or high school or whatever, I really encourage you to pick up an, uh, an art book and kind of skim through there, read through there the concepts. It helps you tremendously with doing here. So Amanda, now is almost a good time to ask us. Amanda asked what design that we're doing, and Sadie does have a completed version of. I do. So we'll maybe see what. Browse that done. over there. So these are her foils, and then this is Sadie's completed mannequin, just so that you have an idea of where she's going today. So let's just. So. As you can see, like you see this placement quite a bit just because of the slicing, right? Uh -huh. Like that color down there. Wow. And if you want to lift up that very bottom layer, if you pick this up, right, you can see this whole section, right, is one big piece. But when the hair falls down on top of it, you don't, it's not as big or as dramatic as you would think it is. And Rain's hair is going to be the same way. like. She has a ton. Those are all slices except for through the top. So not as dramatic as you would imagine it to be. Okay, so working on the right side, okay? okay. And this is pretty much going to mirror that left side. Um, but like eyebrows, right. they are sisters, not twins. <laughs> sisters, not twins. Yes, because, um, you know, some people have more density of hair on one side than the other. Um, you know, maybe it's cut just a little bit more layering in one area, so it's not going to be exact. Don't worry about it being exact. No one's going to be like, oh, it's half a centimeter less thick. Right. Because densities are so different. Yeah. Like, from side to side. I mean, how many people have you had that, like, have a ton of hair in the back and, like, no hair in the front? Yeah. <laughs> Sisters, not twins. That's right. <laughs> they do this color really pretty. Thank you. So this is where we're going. This is, this is where, where we're, we're <laughs> <laughs> at the bottom of the mountain. At the bottom. Okay. So once again, um, right now, this is just two pieces, right? Um, so this is like creating symmetry in that back area. If she had more of a um, asymmetric haircut, right? We probably wouldn't be creating that symmetry in the back. Okay. Okay, so once again, I like to create my little subsection so I know where I'm working to. Uh, let's see here. So just combing this and kind of seeing where this is falling, right? My theory is <laughs> if it's falling this way today, if it's styled this way today, more than likely it's going to fall that way and get styled that way again tomorrow. Okay. So I like how you, I mean, we often encourage our students in cutting class to place their index finger at the bottom of the section that they are subsectioning. And I definitely see that you do the same. So you That's just right. Place your finger where you want your foil. That's go. right. That's right. Okay. So using your rat tail comb mine's extra long because it's scary and i like that um <laughs> you know to kind of whoops sorry use it as a pen right you're writing with it or drawing so making sure we get full saturation through here even though, once again, this is a pretty fine slice. Rain has pretty coarse, thick hair. We want to make sure we got it fully saturated. Yeah. We don't want to take our foils out and have some weird spotty mess. 
And you just hold your hand below the foil. That's right. Keep it stable. Mm -hmm. Use it as a platform, pushing up towards the head in case you are sliding at all. Okay. Slice. Thin section. Yeah, girl, thin. 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 <laughs> Okay, using the back of my comb to smooth that out, getting rid of all the little tiny baby hairs. And you still have her slightly tilted away from you. That's right. So I'm using my thumb and my middle finger to kind of hold this foil in place while I come up here and paint. And I think I really do that more on this right side. I'm not really sure why that is, but... Maybe Will it's, you not take a section much larger than that? Like, if you can't stabilize it with your hand from your thumb and index. Yeah, I won't. Yeah, it point. is. I have really small hands. Yeah. <laughs> Some people are able to utilize the whole length of that foil, right? Which is right. amazing. Um, wish I could do that. I cannot. <laughs> Deborah said that you kept her interest by showing the finished result. Oh, Thank good. Yeah, <laughs> I know. So much work into this. It does look so good. It's hard to show color from start to finish. Um, so here's also the front that she's buying. Katie also cut this. Her husband is a musician in a rock band, and she has some shag cutting skills. <laughs> Okay, this is also, I'm a weird tool person. Yes, ma'am. And I like different things for everything. That's right. So, are, do you use two different types of clips for two different types of tension? Um, not necessarily for two different types of tension, but just for two different amounts of hair, right? Okay. So, big clips for big amounts of hair, smaller clips for smaller amounts of hair. Um, it also kind of helps me establish which section I'm working in you know those bigger clips I'm like yeah that's not where I'm going right if I was really organized I would get color-coded <laughs> color-coded clips yeah I like that big clips for big sections of yeah hair, small clips for smaller sections that's right of hair. and you will you so say you will get more attention with those smaller clips right yeah I don't know is that something you guys use in hair cutting. Yeah, I have very, I like these YS Spark clips that you use as well, but I will also use like a strong, large clip if I'm blow drying. Uh -huh. um, and I just want to loosely hold large amounts of hair. Um, but I have really, really tiny YS Parks for if I'm cutting something small as well, I just kind of mm. need it cinched in. Out of Even my tinier than yeah. these ones? I have tiny little oh. guys. Tell me more. I know. <laughs> I'll give you some more. Right, isn't that exciting? Yeah. Okay, so if Kuhn is listening right now, <laughs> which I doubt they were, but if anyone that works for Kuhn, if y'all could make these brushes again, I would really appreciate that. Yeah. It's my favorite brush. This brush that you're using? Yes, this fit my tint brush. I only have like four left. It's looking a little raggedy, but it is my favorite. It's like the perfect combination of soft and hard. Mm-hmm what every girl wants. Yeah. <laughs> All right. You guys can hear we've got the sirens going past. We're here in the heart of Midtown Atlanta. We're Van Michael Salon. We're a departmentalized um, salon here in Atlanta, Georgia. So Sadie here is one of our color specialists. We've got Scott Tyler on the feed. He's also oh, one yeah. of our here at Midtown. Hi, Scott. So Sadie is doing color placement on a shag, and really from what I've observed and learned thus far is that a lot of this is very visual, um, where she's truly assessing the density of the hair and where she wants it to go. Why is it that you chose diagonal back subsections again? Because it creates um, a smoother straight line, which sounds really weird, but... Um, instead of like a horizontal subsection, um, it's going to create more of a block. When you pick that um, mannequin's hair up yeah. into that bottom piece, you will see that whole piece 
just kind of flows through, right? And the other thing about diagonal back sections is that when the hair grows out, it doesn't look as bad. Um, I also feel like if somebody wears their hair up and you have those diagonal back pieces, those actually look a lot nicer and cleaner in the hair yeah. than a horizontal subsection. It does look so much more soft. Like when I pick it right. up and it looks so solid, but right. really objectively, yep. it does look really soft in the hair. Right. So this panel here, mm -hmm. and this panel here yep. is really what you're placing That's right. in right now. That's right. Okay. Okay, so it's one, two, three, four, six. I mean, there are a lot of sounds in this building. It's yeah. like a train. <laughs> it's, a for sure. it's like There's no a piercer. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. So, Sadie and I work together at our Sandy Springs location. We have eight locations um, here in Atlanta. How long have you been with Van Michael? So I lose track all the time. I was telling people for a while that I've been here for 20 years, which is yeah. not actually true. Um, I've been here, it'll be 19 years in August. 19 years. And yep. you went to the Aveda Institute? In Minneapolis. In Minneapolis. I went to the mothership. mothership. Loved it. It was a great experience. If you work for Aveda and you ever get the chance to go to that school and just tour through, it is really cool. I feel so thankful that I had a good cosmetology school experience. I know not everyone's is the same, um, but it really laid the foundation for me. I've only been there once and it is. It's a really beautiful Isn't building. it cool? Yeah, I'm going again in May to teach a cutting class. I'm excited, but I'm staying an extra day in Minneapolis so I'm going to see some art. Yeah. Yeah, I forget. So it used to be um, some sort of religious building, and I forget exactly what religion it was, but it was um, a cool one <laughs> that appreciate aesthetic. Those look so pretty. Okay, so... We're going to so add, gratifying. isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it really serves the OCD inside of you. <laughs> so if someone is just learning to work, because my favorite part about watching you um, is how clean you work. Like, I really love how clean um, and tight your sections are and how precise your application is. Right. Like, say someone is kind of either one been behind the chair for a little while mm -hmm. and kind of is like, you know, I just really want to work on cleanliness, or they're just sure. getting started. Sure. What are some of your tips for how clean you work? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, I I don't I don't know if I have an exact tip. That's just kind of my personality type. I'm very type A. Um, all I'll say, if there needs to be motivation to be cleaner is just know the cleaner your section is, just like with hair cutting, the better your outcome is gonna be. Um, willy nillying it, um, picking up random pieces, doesn't end very well. Um, also, your clients notice. Yes. Um, they like the cleaner you work. Um, they don't like having color all over the rest of them. Um, and they appreciate it. Okay, so you can see right now from this section, we have a V shape, right? And um, earlier I was talking about the golden triangle, right? Yeah. So we have literally created a triangle within her hair, all right? Okay. So as this falls down, what should happen is she'll have two light pieces that highlight this area. Now, when we're looking at this, and she has this long tail, we have to decide now, right? Like, do we want this long tail to pop? Do we want it to kind of hide? Um, we talked to Rain beforehand about that a little bit. She said, do whatever you want. Great answer. So my, my feeling is this, right? I don't want anything light coming from the root area because we have these two light pieces coming through here. However, I do want a little bit of this to pop through the bottom. So 
I am going to literally pick this up. You can see this layer falls right here, mm -hmm. okay? So I'm gonna hold on to this tail. This is what I do a lot when I'm trying to pick up a, spe a specific section and I don't know how it was cut. Obviously, Hannah cut this so she could tell me, but we're gonna do it this way, okay? So picking this up, this still has a little bit left in there. So you're leaving the golden triangle. Yeah, leaving the golden triangle. Okay, I'm actually gonna take that. Okay, we're gonna clip this up. And rather than go all the way to the root on this one, I'm gonna back comb this. So the root, once again, stays dark, but that mid area and her ends will be light. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to back comb this. Ooh, look at how that wraps up. Yeah. That's super exciting, isn't Great it? Great hair. <laughs> <laughs> Some people, I mean, you're like, come on. Yeah. Why won't your hair back comb? But this is good, Rain. You're doing a good job. Okay. Great job. So <laughs> below your back combing section, right? Starting in your mid again, turning my brush um, vertically, painting up, feathering up, so we don't create a line in her hair, okay? Using the palm of my hand to stabilize. I know a lot of you now are using boards, which is so smart. Um, you know, at one point I was taught that that was lazy. I don't think it's lazy at all. I think if it works for you, um, then great. <laughs> yeah. If it makes it your outcome better, why not? Um, otherwise, you're just making life hard for you. Okay, so folding up, folding your ends. You have a nice little vertical packet. Okay. And you're not going to the root just because you do not want to give lightness and pop. That's right. That's right. And we don't want to disrupt our golden triangle. Yes. Okay. The golden triangle. Mm-hmm. All right. So once so we're leaving that little piece out because that's part of that other layer. We're back combing this. I can't wait to brush this out when we're done. <laughs> but the new botanical repair, that actually really helps. If you let that sit on those back comb pieces, it's a lot easier to brush out. Oh really? Mm-hmm. Yep. Part one. Part three. Part three. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Wendy is asking, what um, volume are you using in the lightener? We are using 20 volume. 20 volume. And yep. you put in, so this is the Aveda in lightener, and you put in the Aveda Botanical Repair Part 1. That is correct. Which, what is, what is Botanical Repair Part 1 doing Oh, here? Lord. I know. I knew you were going to ask me that. I, well, I know it's So, <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> so it's kind of um, Aveda's answer to Olaplex, okay? Um, so, it's added into the hair color just like Olaplex is. Um, I think the main difference with botanical repair um, and Olaplex is that it goes into a deeper part of the hair that I was not even aware existed. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think it's called the F layer okay. or something of that nature. Uh, but yeah, it just basically goes in and repairs uh, damage. Uh, also, the botanical repair is amazing, uh, has conditioning properties, unlike the Olaplex. Cool. All right, so leaving those little short pieces out from that other layer, only focusing on our little tail, right? Yeah, so leaving out all the shorter pieces. That's right. Oh, thank you, Henson. Henson said the F layer is correct. Perfect. Like, <laughs> Why, thank Perfect you. Right? In my defense, um, I had a client at that 8 a.m. class that Aveda was teaching <laughs> yeah. us about the botanical repair. Uh, yeah. yeah. I do love botanical repair. At least shampoo and conditioner. It's been one of my favorite. It's the bomb. But I haven't, I don't do color, so I don't know. Girl, it's amazing. About, um, one and two. Everyone needs it. Yeah. 
especially if they're getting bleach in their hair. They all, everyone needs it. So why is it again that you said that you don't use, you sometimes use a board? I, I typically don't use a board. Yeah. Um, I just didn't, that wasn't what we were doing when I learned how to do hair initially. Um, it doesn't come naturally, the flow of it. I am very interested in learning how to. Um, but yeah, I haven't needed to up until this point. Nice, yeah. Totally open to it though. <laughs> Ready to learn something different always. Okay. And you kick the ends of hair up. Because sometimes I watch you when you foil. And sometimes mm -hmm. you kick ends out. And then sometimes, like today, you're like kicking the ends up into the end. Like right. So you flip them up in there because the entire section is getting colored. Um, all right. Wow. That is super loud. Um, if somebody has had previous highlights in their hair, like a lot of our clients have in the salon, um, we don't ever bleach over previously highlighted pieces, right? right? We typically follow the same pattern. Okay. So yeah, let's give like a quick, like comparison a little bit too. Yeah. Since you do have such a completed version. Yeah. Um, let's crank that baby up just a tiny little bit. Sure. So she's got these foils that a diagonal back section, some up in and through here, but not all the way to the root. And then That's she's probably got the main this difference. Yep. Over here. Yep. Nice. All right. Head to head. Oh, head to head. So, Jane. Jane. <laughs> Is that your model? Yeah, name? Fonda. Or, yeah. Because um, it's a Jane Fonda wig. Uh, the, <laughs> Jane doesn't have a rat tail, right? But she still has those short layers up and through there. Right. And all this layering through here, right? Right. So, those diagonal back sections in here. Okay, so that's how it's going to turn out. Yeah. So it falls vertically, mm -hmm. but you can definitely see how it does look really soft and it does almost kind of curve towards the face. Yep. Yep. But keeping that perimeter in place, right? Yeah. You're just creating like an accent. Okay. So let's see. We are now going to section keeping our golden triangle back here. Looking Placement okay. goals, real life goals. Okay. So now I'm going to section this ear to ear to keep that front out of the way. Give me a clean workspace. Order piece in there. Okay. All right. So, looking at this again, all right. Picking this section up. That's our golden triangle. I'm actually going to clip that out of the way so we don't pick it up again. Okay. Looking at this, okay. Where does there need to be color, all right? What parts are we wanting to highlight? Are you, you're typically going over or under, all right? Do we want to pick this piece up? I kind of feel like in through this section, it should be here, right? Right. Okay. Do we want this to be highlighted or do we want it to be dark? I kind of feel like because this is light under here, there should be a dark panel. So another way to create a focal point is to have two lights pointing to the dark, all right? So we are actually okay. going to mirror these two pieces in our next section, okay. all right? So I'm gonna have you look down a little bit, Rain. I guess I just kind of always think about the light pieces being the focal point yep. versus light pointing to dark yep. and the dark being the focal point. Yep, all right. So once again, I'm using my thumb, all right, as placement. And if you can see this layer, the way this falls, okay, I am picking that whole layer up. Okay. So what should happen, all right, when I highlight or make a 
black color through this whole section, it will highlight that whole dark piece. Okay. okay? Yeah. And I love this. I've been really into just negative space. Yeah. And what it does. Right. And what it accents. Okay. And so if we're looking, I'm looking at this section, right? How this all falls. There's like a diagonal. I don't know if you can see this. There's a diagonal mm -hmm. line yeah. that comes through the hair, right? Yeah. So I'm mimicking that. I'm following that. And so there's this light piece under here. We don't want it to be too close together because we want some dark underneath there to support it. So right now I'm kind of creating my subsection to see how much hair I'm really going to need to pick up. So right now, before you subsection, like yes. right now you're determining how much of the hair do you want to lighten. Right, so right. The thickness of it. Right. Okay. So, and then a lot of times I'll use um, my rat tail to kind of lift it up, right? Mm -hmm. Where is that falling? How is that laying on there? So now we have our subsection created, and I'm going to start foiling it. We're going to change out these two things. Okay. All right, so once again, slice, right? Why? Right. Because it's underneath, and she has so much hair. If I were to weave that, you weren't, you wouldn't really see it. I mean, you can, right? Right. Once again, it's just going to give you a more natural look. All right. Picking our hair up, putting our foil underneath. A lot of people use um, their rat tail to place their foils. Once again, just wasn't taught that way. <laughs> so, so you inch your way up to that inch. top line. Yes, you're just kissing that line. Kissing the line. Mm -hmm. well done. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. I'm not gonna lie. Like I, I, all I do is, is observe and respect colorists. <laughs> but I just like, like you mentioned about how clients notice things. But mm -hmm. like, I really notice and appreciate cleanliness. <laughs> Like, if it's just, like, I don't even, I feel like somebody could have no idea what they're doing, but if they work as clean as you do, I would be like, oh my gosh, they're just so good. It is, it's satisfying. It's like yeah. those, what, cutting butter videos or whatever? Yeah. I don't know, is that a butter. thing? Yeah, it is. <laughs> cutting jello. Yeah. Okay. So, folding up, making a nice seal, folding your ends in. All right. Moving along. Next piece. And you're slicing because it's underneath of the hair. That's right. You do want it to pop. Rain That's has right. a ton of hair density. Correct. Okay. Okay. All right. Up. Using the back of my comb to smooth the hair, getting it as close to the scalp as possible, having tension with my forefinger and thumb. Starting at the midsection. Working your way to the top. I feel like I can do color after this. Okay, good. I'm, gonna I'm excited. <laughs> yeah. Well, just like I thought I could cut hair. <laughs> hey, that's, that's not good. good. I mean, it's okay. I like it. I kind of feel like it looks like an old lady wig, but I mean, whatever. That's cool. No. Yeah. You know I like to um, do that news anchor hair. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this piece is super long. I'm gonna flip it on up in there. Flip it up. And we're working with virgin hair, correct? Oh my gosh, yes. <laughs> yes. Have you ever? Yes. Like, have you ever? I mean, in the history of all hair videos, has there ever been a video with a virgin <laughs> hair model? Yeah. Good Lord. Henson said I'm gonna do your color touch up next time. <laughs> Mine? Yeah, you're just gonna walk me through it. Tyler will fight me for it. Oh my god. So cute. I do feel so confident in placing these foils. You're like, I got it. I mean it's just so skinny. I know I'm fascinated okay. by that, but it's such a skinny sliver. Yeah. So the idea is you should be able to read a newspaper through your section. Read a newspaper through it. Yeah. Okay. 
I don't know who does that now, but I'm yeah. sure there are people that do, <laughs> right? Read your Kindle through yeah. the yeah. section of weaving. Mm-hmm. Erin Cat Dodson says, hey, hi, Cat. <gasps> hi, Cat. Joe wants to know what kind what kind of foil comb is that? You said it's <gasps> an extra long tail. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know. What is it? And um, Utsumi. Utsumi, you know, um, extra long tail. Extra long rat tail. We um, we have this really cute older um, supply salesman that comes into our salon yeah. named Alan, and he hooks us up with all the new tools. Um, I have like ten of these long rat tail combs. Um, why do you like the extra length other than I don't the know <laughs> I think I yeah it's like a little sword yeah I don't know when I smoked I had like um one of those cigarette holders that was long and yeah. I like to flick that around I don't know what it is <laughs> it's weird it's an extension of myself yeah okay <laughs> I'm here for that though yeah I don't think it has like any particular um reason Kind of like a narwhal's horn, right? Yeah. And you said your your brush was a cune brush. Yes, it's a cune brush. Cune. Make me some new brushes. I would love to have some. Okay. So, keeping our tension with our forefinger and our thumb, right? Right. And so sorry, everyone, that I have brown fingernails because mm -hmm. of COVID. I have not gotten my nails done in a very long time. And that is the hallmark yeah. of a colorist. <laughs> it is, and you're busy. Yes, I ask you, does your colorist actually color your hair if her nails are not brown? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right? me, you know, me, what does that mean? <laughs> How do you get away with that? I mean, I'm super, like, I might not be getting color on my client, but I'm definitely getting it on me. Nice. Okay, so we have a good question. Anytime you do slices, mm -hmm. is it always the rule of thumb to be thin enough to read a newspaper through them, or does it depend on what your end goal is? I say it's always thin enough to read a newspaper through, because you are always going to get even lift that way. Anything thicker than that, you're going to get uneven lift. Yeah. Um, in my experience, maybe, maybe you get lift with a thicker piece um, yeah. that I've never been successful that way. So, so basically, yes, you almost always <laughs> just for you know, sheer saturation. I like to be open to both sides. Yeah, Hannah, you know, I'm like, I'm like, yeah. why not? Show me you can do it, <laughs> and I'm there for you. Yeah. Um, it would be a whole lot easier. We'd be done with rings here by now. Yeah. <laughs> Susan wants to know what type of foil comb it is. It's an extra long um, rat tail comb. From, from Utsumi. Utsumi. Made in Japan, of course. Did you ever see Beautician and the Beast with Fran Dresser? <gasps> yeah. No. What? I know, right? Oh my God. I just feel like that was a Fran Dresser moment. Um, oh, Tyler's on here. Tyler says you're the best. He's glad uh, to have you as a mentor. Tyler did Sadie's Beautiful Color. Yes. And he works with us at Sandy Springs at Van Michael Salon. Thanks, Tyler. Yay. Love you, Tyler. Mary from Ireland wants to know about the strength of peroxide, which is 20 volume. That's correct. Nice. Get it done. When in doubt, bleach it out. Yeah. <laughs> Ned agrees. Don't trust the colors with perfectly clean nails. Oh, uh, right. Who are those people? Yeah. Like, I just, I don't know. How old is your daughter now? Um, my child is, will be 10 months old in, what's today, the 21st? Nice. Um, yeah, 10 months old. So I'm sorry if my word recall is really bad. My brain has been severely damaged by no sleep. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> All right, so painting down and through. Nice. Jill, I'll take, I'll zoom in on her foil comb. 
zooming. Yeah, we want to. Do we want to hold it up to yeah. the camera? We'll find out, and we'll post it in the comments. How about that? Yeah, we will. We'll post it in the comments. Because I know it's not YS Park. No. Um, I like those YS Park ones. They're pretty thin. This is. It's a carbon comb too. Yeah. You can um, flat iron with it. Oh. Yum. Yeah. So you can, you know, take some good sections and flat iron. It's good. Okay. Na, na, na. Folding our foils. Oh, good night. It's a section that never ends. I know. When I cut Rain's hair, like, I dramatically underestimated how much hair she had. For real? Yeah. All right. So I tell people this all the time. It's really important to, you know, remember ergonomics so you don't break your back. Yeah. I just realized, I'm like, oh, this seems really hard. I thought hard. we for you, just slurring that. <laughs> so this is much better. Is this okay for you, Hannah? Yeah. Okay. Great. Okay. All right. So holding with our forefinger and thumb, super tight, starting at our mid, working up. And still slightly diagonal in sectioning. Oh, it's definitely diagonal okay. in sectioning. Diagonal back. Um to think if I ever do diagonal forward, like forward slash. Yeah. I don't. I don't know if I ever do it. No. That's a good question. I have to really think about that. Next hair brain. That's right. <laughs> Next time. Mm hmm. So just to bring anybody up to speed that's just joined, this is Sadie and we're Van Michael Salon. We're here in the heart of Midtown. We have the lovely rain under here. <laughs> And here's some of our end goals. Brady has pre-colored a mannequin. So really what she's teaching is, is about how it's very visual of what she wants to accent, what she wants to pick up, and what she wants to leave. Um, Jane, Jane F. So this is the panel that she's working on now. Yes, that second, second tier. And the boldness of this is from the slide. That's right. Yeah. And you can even see the reflection of the subsections of how it's parted. Mm-hmm. All right. So once again, working up towards the top, not getting too close, just barely touching it so we don't have any bleeding. Coming all the way through, making sure we're really saturated. I feel like I'm having to go over these sections a hundred times because rain has really pretty coarse hair. Kind of feel like, you know, I don't know. Have you ever seen how like water rolls off a duck's yeah. feathers? I'm like, yeah. get in there. <laughs> so that's when you're really just switching your brush to be more vertical. Yeah. So just really right. pushing that product so it's, into the hair. Right. So it's the same concept as in art, right? When you cross hatch. All right. Okay. So cross hatching is going horizontal and vertical and diagonal. So you're kind of going every way yeah. to get every last piece of hair. Yeah. Look at that pretty little section. I just love, look at this, how that falls. Yeah. Right. So that's going to be so cool. Okay. Let's do. Llama, yes, this will be saved. So all of the hair brains are live. You can always go on to hair brains um, on their page and tap their lives. And then you can go back and rewatch any live as well. Um, but we'll also share it on our own personal pages. Or you can go ahead and tap share at the bottom onto your own page. And then that way you kind of have reference of where to find it later. Um, we'll definitely post Rain's final complete um, photo after she shampooed and toned and everything and then we'll post her final image in the in the comments 
Where are we at in time, Hannah? We're like right at an hour. Oh, wow. See? Knew it. All right. So taking those ends, using your brush to kind of swizzle them up in there. So just your hand holding the Yep. Pushing up. Just out of curiosity, I'm gonna count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine. Nine, nine <laughs> is a good number. Okay. <laughs> okay. So that section is done. And just like in the mannequin, we will then be mirroring this side and creating another golden triangle. We lost our mannequin. <laughs> Bye, that was like a scary movie. Yeah, it was. She went rolling. All right, so creating another golden triangle. So we're gonna section horizontally so I can connect them at the top. Oh, hello. Welcome to Van Michael. <laughs> we are not here right now. Renee's just joining. We are using the Aveda Enlightener Bleach, uh -huh. and Sadie has put part one of Botanical Repair into the Enlightener, um, and she's using 20 volume in rain care today. And also what she's doing now is that we discussed, really she's a visual placement, but she's using triangles, and she's using odd numbers of foil to create a very natural flow into Ooh. the hair. How is it falling? All right. So looking at this, right? We're going to use that light to direct your eyes towards this middle section where this will be dark and then she'll have that lighter piece coming down. So let's see. Looking at that. She kind of has like almost a cowlick in here. Yeah. So there's something in me that wants to come this way with it. But if we do that, right, then that whole, that's a pretty heavy section. So I'm going to back off of it, all right, and come at that point using my finger as a guide, holding my rat tail comb like a pen, yeah. all right? So you're drawing, and I'm hitting my finger in there, okay? Yeah. So this section is just, I mean, it's pretty, like, falls in this like kind of undulating fashion this light piece is going to accentuate that okay okay all right so this triangle is yes. what the focal point will be the light is lifting yeah so. yes and no it all it all works like in harmony with each other but okay. you're creating negative space right okay and the triangle that's clipped up is the negative space that's right okay so looking at this side, how deep are we going to make this section, right? Okay, so I'm going to pick this up like that. That looks pretty good. It's so funny because it's how we work with this connection in right. like a hair cutter. See? You know, it's often like you just pick the hair up, place your hand underneath. Can you see through it? Right. Do you want to see through it? Right. Um, and then you're really just looking at where it falls. Right. And um, what do I want to leave? Right. So, you know, once again, um, art imitates life. Life imitates art. Hair is art, right? Um looking at hair like an abstract painting, right? Imagining where you're putting these, you know, pieces of paint that are darker light. Um, all those theories are really important to create kind of a balanced feng shui look. Right. Um, you know, if that's not something that you're experienced with, if you don't have that natural inclination, it can be really challenging to understand where you know you're going to put light or dark um 
So hopefully this kind of helps people who do not have that natural inclination to kind of understand where you're going to be putting light and dark. Um, once again, this is like an over or under, this is underneath that layer to highlight that dark piece. I was fortunate enough to start doing hair in the very early 2000s when there was a lot of um, scene hair. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I did a lot of um, hidden panels underneath and that really helps you kind of understand um, placement and layering hair. Yeah. All right, so. Super thin. Super thin. Picking this up. And does how high you lift the hair before you place the coil in matter? Like you don't want to lift it up too high? Or oh, the higher the better, the baby. Higher, the better. Yeah. You can go all the way up, okay. come all the way down. Using the back of my comb to smooth it out, getting all the baby hairs, starting at the mid shaft, working your way up, barely kissing that edge. Is there a song called Kissing the Edge? Yeah. Is that That's what your reels music should be. Right? When if you make a reels paper. Who does that song? That's what I read. I read that now your music song choice is your caption. Oh, really? Yeah, like instead of like a super clever caption, it's like if your song choice is that on point, it is your caption. Okay. So cross hatching. Yes. Cross hatch. I really like it. I did a lot of pottery and ceramics, and anytime you needed to fuse a new piece like your handle to your mug, right. you had to really cross hatch, and then it helped everything fuse together in mm -hmm. those two sections when you blended it. So I felt like that really connected. Yeah. Once again, you know, like if you do not come from an art background, which, you know, you may or may not, I feel like there's a lot of hairdressers who, you know, paint rain paint. Um, you know, do pottery yeah. or into flower arranging. Um, if you do interior decorating, anything of that nature, um, you understand a lot of those thought processes or theories better than the average person. Um, you know, simple things that have helped me um, in my career are, you know, like there is no dark without light when you are painting or drawing in order to see something light you have to create something dark next to it and yeah. vice versa right so yeah. hair color same way um just like you know we are adding texture in her hair by creating dimension um you add texture in paintings by highlighting dark pieces with light whether it's grass, whether it's leaves, whether it's waves, you're tipping those tops of the waves with white, right? Mm -hmm. To create movement. Yeah. So hair cutters, if you have a client who has a mullet or a shag and they're like, I just don't feel like it's textured enough. I need more texture. Use those shears with the, you know, double yeah. holes in them or whatever. Tell them they need to get some highlights because <laughs> that's really what's going to create texture for them. Um, you know, once again, if you have a surface that is one color all the way through, um, doesn't matter how textured it is, you're not going to really see it as much as if it were multicolored. Mm. Okay. Fine slice. So fine. Fran fine. <laughs> Fran fine slices. Fran fine. Okay. Holding this tight. Rain, am I hurting you? 
No. No? Okay, good. You're not allowed to say yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think some people really worry about that. I think they worry about, you know, hurting their yes. client. You need to pull it tight. Okay. Okay. So there's tension on there other than the fact that yeah. you're just holding the tension. Yeah. You're gonna tug it on there. Yeah, you need to pull it down. So I am using my palm as a platform, pushing the foil back up into the head. Okay. okay. I'm picking the ends of our hair up, putting them back in, cross hatching with my brush back and forth up and down every way it's kind of like um i don't know if any of you out there have colored extensions before <laughs> and you only color one side <laughs> you don't flip it yeah. over and color the other part okay. and you pick it up and you're like oh cool this hole underneath yeah. <laughs> um isn't colored it's like that you just want to make sure um, you're really saturating and because you can't flip that section over okay. um, you kind of just need to really get in there with your brush Okay, picking the hair up using the back of my comb to really get it as close as I can to the scalp um, you know I see a lot of colorists out there who do not have clean Close to the scalp foil work because they are going to do a shadow root or a melt yeah and that is really doing yourself a disservice um, because I think you get used to that um, and if we ever get to a point again where <laughs> low maintenance hair filler isn't a thing anymore and right. people want foils that look like they're growing out of their brain um, you are not going to be accustomed to doing that. Right. Um, that is sloppy work. Um, so just try, you know, get it as close as you can. It's good practice. We have so many new people joining. We just want to give you a brief overview of where we're at. This is Sadie. Hi. Hey, we're Van Michael Salon. Today we're at our Midtown location in the heart of Atlanta, Georgia. And Sadie is teaching color placement on a shag. So she's really focusing on triangles and odd numbers in the hair and using um, her sections to determine where the hair is going to highlight and where it is going to um, remain dark so that it can flow naturally through the hair. So, once again, these sections look super big, right? Right. <laughs> like, it looks pretty big. Um, but, once again, rain has so much hair, your density is going to determine the thickness of your subsection, right? Okay, right. So, when this is all said and done, it's not going to be, like, massive chunks. I mean, it's going to be noticeable for right. sure. Um, but it's going to flow. Yeah. So really, really, really saturating your section. Turning my brush vertically to really kind of like dig through the hair. Picking up the tail. Placing it inside. Making sure you have really good saturation. I'm straightening that out because it kind of got a little crinkly. Before you wrap it up. Yep. Okay. Oh, hi, Armand. <gasps> Armand! <laughs> hi! Hi, Armand. It's great to see so much being Michael Love. We love yes. covering so much because we get to meet so many new people. Um, but we love seeing um, our staff. Yeah. Well, life. sometimes that's the only way we get to see people now. Yeah. Right? COVID. COVID. Thanks yeah. a lot. <laughs> yeah. Um, I can't, you know, remember the last time I saw Armand in person. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's really nice. Thank you so much for y'all's support. 
Okay. I like that explanation about like your sections. So you always want them to be able to see through them, like read a newspaper. That's right. Or read something through it, but it could be a thicker section if the hair is less dense. Sure. As long as you can still see through it. Sure. The other thing you have to remember too, if you have a subsection that is you know, more than, I don't even know what this is like a centimeter depth or whatnot. Like if you're taking like half an inch, you are not going to be able to get very close to the scalp. Um, and if you don't want to get close to the scalp, that's fine, I guess. Um, you're going to have some really cool lines in your hair. Okay. Um, but I, it's too thick, even if the hair is not dense. Right. If you're not going to be able to get really close that's to right. the scalp. That's right. Yeah. So the finer the section is, the closer to the scalp you're going to get. I love that you have no bleach on you. You've done this whole Oh! <laughs> yeah. It, it really is impressive, isn't it? Yeah, I'm impressed it with is. myself. <laughs> the <laughs> day is not over yet. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> you know what's going to happen is I'm just going to like back up into it. Yeah. That's usually what happens. Yeah. My butt gets it at some point in the day. Our salon, um, Van Michael, is, thank you so much, Lama, for asking. We are in America. We're in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, <clears throat> however, we have a franchise of salons in Tokyo, and they are called Van Council Salons. However, here in the United States, we have eight locations in, um, uh, in Atlanta, Georgia. All right. Almost done with this section. All right, holding this pretty taut, lifting okay. up. Yes. Okay, placing our foil by hand. You notice like it has a little unevenness. I'm using the back of my comb to smooth that out. Okay, nice and tight. Yeah. Really creating tension with my forefinger and thumb, okay. pressing down, starting at the midsection. Yeah. Okay working our way up never starting at the top like this and going down because you have excess bleach that way and you'll get bleeders everyone hates bleeders they're horrifying yeah <laughs> it's one of the worst feelings when you've spent all this time doing somebody's hair and you like take a foil out and you're like oh yeah oh uh, what is your instagram handle <gasps> oh it's yeah. Sadie's stars. Sadie, oh God, so perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody said earlier she's wearing stars because she is a star. Oh, <laughs> oh man, Henson, if you could star. type that in the comments, that'd be great. If not, it would be put great. It in the comments after at the end, but she's Sadie's stars with a Z because I was born in 1982, and okay. apparently that's still cool to me. So. Yeah. <laughs> But you know, there's a lot, there's a lot of them. I had to differentiate myself some way. Yeah. Did you choose the name Sadie because of the Beatles? Why did you choose? Uh, we are, we yeah. Have, yeah. You got, mm. okay, okay, so if you haven't listened to Sexy Sadie by the Beatles, you are seriously missing out. Every and time we hear it, we think of you. That's I almost it. listened to it on the way here to pump myself up because <laughs> Sexy Sadie sounds like a real bad bitch. Yeah, <laughs> she is. Yeah. She like ruined some people's lives. Yeah. So, like in a good way, I think. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> That's what people have always been hoping every single time we hear that song. Like, yeah. Yeah. Oh, Rachel, thank you so much for putting Sadie's. Oh, and Lindsay, everybody put it in there. Yay. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Too. Hi, Jamie. Hi. And Tyler says, Good hair takes time, no shortcut. That's oh, great. Yeah, yeah, we all know that, right? <laughs> it really does take time. And I, I also feel like if you are too fast, <laughs> like I've had clients say to me, wow, you are really taking the time yeah. to look through my hair and decide which pieces to highlight. The last person I went to literally did my hair in 20 minutes. Yeah. Um, there was no thought that went into it. Um, you know, clients notice things like that. Um, you know, it's always surprising to me what clients do notice, right? You think they're like not really paying attention. 
Some people don't even know if they get foils in their head or not, and they've gotten foils every time. It's really weird to me. Right. But then they'll be like, oh, yeah, you um, parted your hair differently this time. Yeah. <laughs> and you're like, oh, okay. Yeah. Or last time you colored my hair, the glaze was a different color in the yeah. bottle. Yeah, they do. They notice a lot. It's weird. It's weird. I'm like, okay. All right, so cross hatching. I mean, I feel, you know, I'm painting this piece for freaking ever. All right, but you gotta make sure it's saturated. You don't wanna like, it's like working out, right? If you're not sore after you've worked out, right. it's a waste of time. Right. If you didn't really saturate the piece and you take this out and it's not saturated and it looks like garbage, then all your work was for naught, right? So true. Okay, so here we have our golden triangle mirrored by our other golden triangle. So at this point, um, we really have like a dark piece that runs through here, broken up by this lighter piece, okay? Right. So <clears throat> let's take this down and kind of see what this is looking like. Okay, I'm gonna have you look down a little bit, Rain. This looks like a lot of dark in yeah. this section to me, right? Now, <clears throat> because, you know, we're not putting a ton of color in Rain's hair, probably a little less than my mannequin. Um, the mannequin has some pieces at this very top that are light. I'm gonna kind of back it up this top layer, okay? You can almost see where this falls. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna section this forward. I'm gonna do a subsection here, okay? So I'm going to create that little subsection okay, through here. Okay, So I'm working a little bit backwards now. I worked bottom to top, and now I'm going to kind of work top down. Okay. okay. So you're visualizing. You have this light piece, okay, and where that's falling. Okay. Looking at this, this kind of almost flows in this direction. I am going to connect my golden triangle. Yeah. How is this falling? Like this. Man, just like disconnection in here. Right. Thing. Yeah, you're just observing. Which what is interesting. Doing. Nobody, like, nobody has ever explained that to me before yeah. so that's super that's oh, cool it's exactly like it like it there there's guidelines like you're using sure. triangles and sure. sections but really most of all it's picking the hair up and seeing right. what's left and what do you want to leave and right the density so very visual okay so she has this long point in her layers right yeah. i want to leave that out because we created those two lights to point to that okay, okay. so i'm going to actually Hold on to it yeah. so I don't pick it up, okay? Yeah. And so I'm kind of going through here and feeling. All right, so that looks like that's going to lay right on top. So I am taking a horizontal section, yeah. okay? Clipping this up. And at this point, I actually, I'm not going to slice anymore. I'm gonna weave. Okay. Because if I took a horizontal slice at this point, it would be one whole panel that fell through here. Right. And that wouldn't be super cohesive. The other thing that would happen is you would be connecting these two points of light. And I don't necessarily wanna have these touch. I want there to be some negative space in between. Yeah. Okay. So I'm picking this up and this is gonna be just kind of a thicker weave. I'm literally taking two pieces. So you're gonna have two swaths of color come through there. Okay. Picking this up, laying this down. I'm gonna come this way, Hannah. Yeah. All right, holding tension. Starting so mid So negative shaft. on either side. That's right. So the light is not touching. Yep. Light in, but they're gonna visually connect a little bit. That's more. right. Cool. So we're breaking up that swath of dark through there. Flipping those ends up. 
painting up, painting down, painting around. Okay. Sealing that nice and tight. Okay. Okay. Where is this falling? There is this really great layer through here. I was just going to see when I pick this up, how that falls. Perfect. Okay. So once again, we don't want to touch our other two points of light. You can see this layer is falling on top of this longer piece. We're going to want to focus on this. Once again, a thicker weave. I'm actually going to take three pieces this time because the section is wider. It warrants that. But still leaving Still out leaving here. negative space between the two lights so yeah. I don't connect them, okay? Cool. And once again, like, it's a pretty fine section. Just because I'm weaving thicker, um, have a thicker weave, doesn't mean that my subsection is thick. Slipping the top up in there. Yeah. Right. Yeah. If you, once again, if you put um, horizontal panels in this subsection, it's going to create bulk. Right. Okay. So we're going to put another thick weave right next to that to make that stand out just a little bit more because that hair is pretty thick. Once again, not connecting. We're just going to take two. You can see the negative space in between. Lifting up, pressing down, using the back of your comb to really smooth it out. So every time you use the back of your comb. Yeah, I, yeah, I'm like yeah. extremely anal retentive about that. I didn't even realize I did that actually until one of my assistants pointed <laughs> Pointing it out to me, they're like, what are you doing? <laughs> Which, you know what? For those of you who don't have an assistant, um, having somebody watch you work is really interesting. Um, there's a lot of things that you may be doing that you are not aware of that are good and bad. Yeah. Um, you know, the way you're standing uh, that is not ergonomically correct, and so your back hurts, or you're picking up you know, something when you don't need to, so it's taking more time. Um, I highly recommend having somebody that, you know, likes you, yeah. <laughs> watch you. <laughs> so they're not like, what are you doing? Yeah, before we're all watching you, like right now. <laughs> yeah, let's not talk about that. <laughs> all right, so taking another piece, and this time we're gonna just take two big chunks, creating okay. a lot of movement. You're yeah. not just like going through like this plastic. Absolutely not. Full foil weave. No. Once again, Is you were almost like bricklaying your sections a little bit. Um, no, because you're not staggering wear. Okay. Um, you just want to make sure that it's a heavier weave that you're leaving a lot of negative space out in between. Um, that it's not super close together. Yeah. But, you know, should be unique to your client so you can create um, different looks for everyone. You know, you can use this thought process on anyone you, and do a different pattern, right? Mm -hmm. But I would recommend definitely using diagonal back sections just so it flows through the hair a little bit better. Yeah. Okay. So that little area is done. Okay. How is this falling? 
Oh yeah, you can definitely see. Right, you can kind of see where that's gonna be. Yeah. You can kind of look at the hair and be like, all right, where are we gonna go from here? All right, so I like this amount of negative space in here. Yeah. Let's pick this up right on top. This layer is kind of um, all the same length. Yeah. Okay, there's nothing to really um, go under at this point. So we're gonna go on top, okay? okay. So this, just like in the mannequin, there's this tiny little section through the top, right? It's like just a little bit, just a teeny little hinting of color. Yeah, like it definitely becomes more Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep. And at the very top, in the front, right down her part line, I literally just did one foil um, to create a little bit of a point of interest through her bang area. Yeah. I mean, that's just one. This right here is just one? Yep, just one. Okay. So it's, uh, I mean, it's really about tailoring the color to the haircut, um, you know, unique to your client. Well, I think that's definitely, I mean, that's, that speaks to me. I guess I just hear everything coming from a cutting background, but, you know, we teach a lot of techniques of cutting techniques in cutting class. But right. really, the main goal, what we're always trying to explain, is customization. For sure. Customizing every single thing to yep. each person. So yep. you're really showcasing what about the haircut do you want to showcase? Right. Instead of just going in in a classic full foil or... Yes. Well, that's why it's really important to, if you departmentalize like Van Michael does, to communicate with the person that's going to be cutting somebody's hair they're doing a major change you know if they're going from long to short and you do balayage and then they go get a bob right. <laughs> which has right. actually happened to me before um <laughs> you need to know um i prefer especially this technique i would not do this on somebody before their haircut I would definitely do this after okay. um, because it is so specific to how the layers are going to fall. Yeah. Um, if you can't, like I said, my thought process is if the hair is falling this way today, if it's styled that way on purpose, it's probably more than likely going to fall that way again, right? Okay, yeah. We kind of feel that way a lot with curly hair, you know, a right. lot of how it's laying, you know, to... Right, off, right. Okay, so you can literally see in Brain's hair, in this haircut, right? This back section, so this is long right here, right? And then it starts sh a little bit shorter through this front area. Right. Yeah? yeah? Okay, so I'm going to kind of create a division with that foil. So we're highlighting kind of like that longer piece. So this kind of stays a little bit separate and dark. Once again, because Rain yeah. has never had hair color before, yeah. um, I don't really want to give her a ton up by her face, so if she's not super freaked out, maybe she'll yeah. even forget it's back there. Okay, so taking a heavy weave, dee -dee -dee. leaving some negative space in between. Okay. okay, picking that up, laying it down, using the back of your comb to smooth it out. You use um, your rat tail to put your foils in. Good for you. I don't know if that's faster or slower. Like putting your rat tail in yep. and sliding your... Yep. Oh, like with your foil. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. You know, I don't know. For me, I've, I've always, when I see people do that, I'm intrigued by it just because the heads are so round. Right, so right, right, right. Day, like, I feel like it makes a lot of sense when you just place the foil underneath. Yeah. Placing the comb. Right. The foil yeah. It can just be more curvy, which means it would maybe hug to the head. A little tighter, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, visually, when we're looking at this, right? There's a lot of dark 
still yeah. hanging out. So this is not going to be predominantly light. Right. Okay. So the back is completed. Yeah. All right. So once again, Rain's never had hair color before. We don't want to scare her for the rest of her life from hair color. Um, <laughs> she does have, look at how cute the little flips in the front of her hair are, right? Texture, um, it's so pretty, um, but we could probably put a little bit of an accent piece in there in the front. Is that okay with you, Rain? Okay. <laughs> She's like, mm-hmm. Yeah. She's on, Rain. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's MK Ultra. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so because Rain wears her hair kind of to this side, right? Mm -hmm. What we're looking for is a layer in here on top, so over or right. under, okay? Uh, you know, for me, you could go either way. I typically like when things kind of peek out. You see this whole area, right? Okay. That comes to a yeah, point, yes. right? It's just like begging for you to color it, right? So we're going to do this just like I do when I get my hair cut. I'm like, don't cut this piece. And I hold on to it till the very yeah. end. Um, I'm going to hold on to this, okay. okay? And I'm going to start sectioning once again at a diagonal. Because if I horizontal this, you're going to have a block instead of a nice slice of color that's going to move through the hair, okay? Okay. So we're looking at kind of the layering in here, picking this up. That looks pretty good. This is so gratifying. So let's kind of see. So now I'm going to keep holding. So if you get really close, and this is interesting, right? You can't see all this layering in here when it's dark, but there's like yeah. super fine amounts of layering in here. So I'm going to keep sectioning through, okay, till I get rid of all those tiny fine little layers. And all I have is this long section. I'm going to go a little bit more diagonal. Rain, everyone says you're very pretty. <gasps> oh, <laughs> she? <laughs> she is. A... She's a good model. Okay, so you can see when I picked up that last section, there's a long piece in there. Yeah. Okay, so what yeah. that tells me is that's where that underneath layer is starting to kick out. Okay. okay? So, you know, I kind of was going through and seeing where that fell. It's pretty clean. So I'm going to start foiling my little section. I'm going to actually take this piece out to create some negative space next to it. Mm -hmm. Are you still using 20 volume lightener? Uh -huh. Yeah, you haven't remixed yet. Mm, no. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Okay. So how is this falling? So actually, because this is sitting a little bit closer up to the surface, okay. my first piece that I'm taking is going to be woven, okay? Okay. So it's not like a heavy chunk. And you can see, like this looks like it has been like cut through, uh -huh. right? Because she has short and long pieces through there. Right. Sometimes um, when I'm cutting or cutting coloring here that's layered like that, I'll pick up like a straight section and you'll see like long and short and sometimes I'll just pick up the longer pieces. Right. Okay. So starting at the mid, working to the top. Using my palm as a board. In my day, they didn't have boards. Yeah. Uh, pushing forward with my hand so your foil does not slide. Pushing forward with your hand underneath? That's right. Okay, cool. Cross hatching back and forth so we get complete saturation. Folding up, smoothing, folding each side. 
nice and tight, nice and clean. All right, working down. So now we're going top down. Yep, top down. So next slice, right? Also very fine. You should be able to read something between the hair. Now, you know, in the salon, typically at this point, I would be like, all right, we need to check these back foils because they've been in there for an hour. Um, and they may or may not be done because um, they haven't processed with heat. They might still be cooking in there. But the good thing is because they're in the back, you can take them out, wipe them off, spray them with some water, and they can stop processing. Cool. The other thing you can do is like, spray them with some water, put some botanical repair on them, let them chill. Okay. okay. Deborah wants to know if this is designed for a side part. This is, um, the mannequin that we did is not. That was more for a middle part, but we are tailoring this placement to Rain and her haircut. So yeah. It's always important to ask your client before you start coloring their hair, <laughs> where do you part your hair? Um, I don't know how many times I've had a client come sit in my chair and for some very bizarre reason, they have it parted the complete other way. Right. I don't ever do that in my life. I yeah. don't know how other people <laughs> do that, yeah. but I'll start foiling their hair and be like, wait a minute. Do you, where do you part their hair? They're like under here, all the way from yeah. the back. And you're like, oh, well, good to know. I'm so glad. So it is super important. Um, I mean, I think I asked Rain, you know, when I asked her to be a model, do you always part your hair to the side? And she's like, that's just where it falls. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, okay. Well, that's yeah. where we're going to color it to because if it falls in a different way, then this isn't going to work so hot. So really, no matter where you're at on the head, you're always pinching with your thumb and index finger. 100%. And yep. then it's like you're almost stabilizing with your ring finger. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> All the sirens from mid Yeah, I wish it was fire. Yeah. We're on fire. Yeah. Danger, danger. For those of you who are just joining, here in Midtown Atlanta. This is Sadie and we're Van Michael Salon. We're departmentalized and Sadie is Katie. Sadie is one of our top colorists in the company and she works at our Sandy Springs location. So when I'm determining how thick this section is going to be, right, I'm still like, oh, we still have this cute little curly thing right here. I got to get that, right? Yeah. So yeah. I'm working till I pick that sucker up. Okay. Um, you know, the other thing you want to consider if you've kind of lost track of how thick your section is, is, you know, looking back, like how deep is that? Um, you know, right now we're like five foils deep. Yeah. It's probably like maybe an inch thick. So it's still really not, n not that thick. And I 
I'm almost out of bleach. Maybe we might just make it. Yeah. Yeah. So that could be our good point to pause. Yeah. Yep. We're definitely going to. Oh, and then you knew we would ask. I knew somebody would want to know your formula for your mannequin. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> we will post the formula in the comments. Yes. Um, it might take me a minute to actually. Yes. yes. It does look great, Katie. Thank I you. Love choices. My child really liked it. She tried oh, really? to yeah rip her face off a couple times. <laughs> she is enjoying the mannequin. The interesting part about working with Sadie is that I I work with a lot of talented colorists, but Sadie often works with really, really beautiful colors. Like there's always, like it's very colorful or she's going to, um, I feel like you're very talented as far as gray blending. If somebody's transitioning into fully gray or if they want a really, really soft throw out, but um, really when I think of you, I think of very pretty color. Oh, well, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, stay tuned for formula in the comments below. Teacher, thank you. Awesome. All right, let's check where we're at. Have we gotten that little piece? There's one, just a little bit more. Yeah, I just want to get that great little curving line through here. Yeah. Let's see. Rain, you have a gray hair. Just like, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Don't talk about yeah. that. Only one is fine. Shut up. It'll be orange today. She's in the wall cave. She's She knows it's secret. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> Are there aliens, Rain? Do you know? <laughs> she's like, yeah, she's like, okay. She knows what's up. She's like, how do you know I'm not yeah. an alien? Yeah. All, right. All right, last foil. Running through the finish line. Rubbing this. Oh, thank you. Good. After today. Okay. We're going to drop this section down so you can look at it, okay? Okay. Oh, look at you. Cute. Yeah, you can definitely see, like, just what it was that you wanted to pick up. Right? So well, you're looking at... back-to-back -back slicing through that? Yep. Okay. Yep. So you can see that whole piece where that's going to kind of fall through there, right? Right. Okay. All right, Brain. All we got to do is process this shampoo and then yeah. put our Let's vibrant give you on. Like a spin little spin. So you can see the back, and then we'll just take a look at your mannequin one more time. Okay. As far as comparison. Because, really, like you mentioned, you never really get to see color on a shag from the back. No. Everything is always it's always from the front. From the front. I mean, even yeah. my hair, you know, like if you're looking at mine, I have these two sections in the front. Yeah. There's not a whole lot in the back. Um, once again, you know. Lots of people see you from the back. Right. So here would be more of a completed blended look. Through the side and through the back. Man, Sadie, thank you so much. Yes, thank you guys so much today. for tuning in. I, we really appreciate it. I hope you learned something. Yeah, right? if you guys have any more questions, feel free to pop them in the comments. Follow Sadie Stars with a Z. She's in the comments as well. And DM her if you have any questions. And again, we're here at Van Michael Salon. So if you need anything, feel free to give us a shout out. And we'll post Rain's final photo in the comments. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Like, what do this look like? Yeah, buddy. Yeah. Mm hmm. Oh, you're like, we're done now. Thanks. I know. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm like, we're done. Let's put this around you before I start taking these out. Oh, you're like,
like I'm done. We will stay here forever. Is that exciting? Or is it scary? You're like, okay, what the fuck? WTF, bitches. Yeah, see, this one's like still. Mur, 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 Let's see. You know what? I'm gonna just take you back to the shampoo bowl and rinse these ones out.